Hi, today I will talk about antibody structure and function. Our body produces antibodies against any external antigen. So let's, let's just look at where does antibody come from and what is the structure of it and how does antibody functions and what is the use of antibody. E. A. Cabot at 1939 did a wonderful experiment where they have injected the rabbit with ovoalbumin. Then they extracted the blood from rabbit, centrifuged it. As a result, they could get the pellet out of it. They could get the pellet of clumped RBCs and WBCs and whatever is rest is the plasma, is the serum. So they took the serum and ran it on a gel. And after that, they found characteristics band pattern. And they have characterized those band and named those bands as alpha, beta, gamma, etc. Now, antibodies are present in this gamma globulin fraction of serum. Now, antibody definitely binds to antigen. So, let us just look at the interaction between antigen and antibody. So, antigen antibody binding it's not ultra strong. So there are no covalent interaction between antigen and antibody. So there are non covalent interactions between antigen and antibody, which includes first of all hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, hydrophobic interactions and van der Waals interactions. Now here is an antibody. So if you look at it, you would say there are two basic chains. One is heavy chain which is heavier in molecular weight, roughly 50,000 kD, or 50,000 Daltons. And another is like a light chain, which is around 25,000. So there are two basic kind of chain. Now in each chain, there is a, in each chain, there is a variable region, which varies from antibody to antibody. And this variable region, is true for both heavy chain and light chain. Both the light chain and heavy chain have has this variable region. Other region in both the light chain and in the heavy chain are constant. That means their sequence and their functionality kind of remains constant throughout multiple species and different antibodies. So now antibodies could be broadly class classified depending upon what type of antigen do they do they recognize so antibody antibodies may not be recognizing the whole antigen it might recognize a part of the antigen known as the epitope for example this is the big antigen whose part is recognized this by this antibody now if this antibody is recognizing only one particular type of epitope then this antibody is known as monoclonal. Otherwise, if the antibody, same antibody is recognizing multiple different epitope of the same antigen, then it is known as polyclonal antibody. Now there could be of different types of antibody and it depends upon what type of light chain and heavy chain does this antibody got. For example, IgG got a he lambda heavy chain and IgG got a gamma heavy chain whereas a kappa or lambda light chain. So using these subclasses of heavy chain and light chain a whole antibody could generate a lot of diversity. So this is how antibody diversity could one of the way by which antibody diversity could be generated. Now antibody are the receptors for the B cell. Now in that situation it is known as membrane bound IgM or membrane bound IgD. In that case you have an antibody along with that you have an Ig alpha and Ig beta domain which has immunoreceptor tyrosine kinase activity which give rise to further, further B cell signaling. Now B cells has antibody which is membrane bound. Upon activation, B cell sometimes get transformed into plasma cell. Now plasma cells are secretory cells which secretes antibody. So definitely what is different between a membrane bound and a secretory antibody? In a secretory antibody, you don't have the transmembrane alpha helical domain which tethers the antibody to the membrane. 
That is why secreted antibody could be easily secreted. Now antibodies could be digested by several enzymes and that can produce several fragments. For example, if you do a harsh digestion like pepsin digestion, you only get a fragment which is known as FAB. Another fragment which is known as fragment crystallizable FC region, it's totally gone. Whereas papain digestion would produce two FAB fragments and one FC fragment. Whereas mild digestions like beta mercap to ethanol reduction, which would reduce the disulfide bond, would produce two heavy chains and two light chains. Now there are several different antigens. Is there several different antibodies for all the antigens? Are all the antibodies that are produced against different different antigens are totally different or they are different into some specific regions? It turns out they are specifically different in specific regions. Otherwise, the overall structure of the antibody and overall amino acid sequence is pretty similar. It has been seen that only three regions in the heavy chain and in the light chain, there is high variability of the amino acids. So which amino acid is present in this region are highly variable. So these regions are known as hypervariable loops. In this antibody structure, in this heavy chain and this light chain, you can see in here only depicted uh, here is the heavy chain. In the heavy chain, you can see there are three loops and these loops are site for polymorphism and there is a lot of diversity of amino acids in these loops. So these are known as hypervariable loop and mostly these hypervariable loops of heavy chain and light chain create the antibody binding groove of a uh, antibody, antigen binding group, groove of an uh, antibody. Now what is the function of antibodies? First of all, antibody could give rise to complement activation. So antibodies bind onto the surface antigens, let's say of a bacteria, and they can bring in complement proteins such as C1Q and thereby activating the whole complement cascade and thereby opsonizing and killing the bacteria. Antibody can also, also bring about antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. So antibody could coat the surface antigens of a bacteria or another pathogen. So there are many cells of our immune system which has receptors against antibodies FC region. So these cells are eosinophil, macrophages, neutrophil, NK cells, etc. etc. So all of these has one thing common which is FC receptor. FC receptor bind to the FC region of the antibody and thereby engaging all these immune cells to, uh, against this bacteria and thereby killing the pathogen. Now also antibodies, especially IgE class of antibodies are involved in allergic response. Now mast cells like other cells also have FC receptors which can bind to IgE antibody and make the mast cell a sensitized mast cell. And a sensitized mast cell when it encounters an allergen for the second time it would degranulate. And the degranulation from the mast cell would produce bunch of phenotypes like smooth muscle contraction, vasodilation, bronchoconstriction and glandular secretion etc and etc. Also antibodies are heavily used in biomedical researches. For example, in ELISA, antibodies are used. Western blotting, immunofluorescence, and also in chromatin immunoprecipitation, all these processes involves usage of antibodies. Not only these antibodies are also used as medicines. So one antibody known as trastuzumab, which is sold under the brand name of Herceptin, is used as a monoclonal antibody to treat breast cancer. Now, rituximab, which is another uh, monoclonal antibody, is used to treat several autoimmune diseases and also sometimes some certain types of cancer. Another important antibody, which is used as an anti-allergic agent or to bring down the, aller the to bring down the allergic responses, is known as omalizumab. Now, omalizumab binds to the FC region of the IgE antibody. Now IgE antibody normally binds to the mast cell 
and help it to degranulate and thereby producing a huge allergic and inflammatory based response. Now omazulumab actually bound bind to the FC region of IgE preventing it from binding to the mast cell and thereby reducing the allergic inflammation response. So that was overall about antibody structure function and their utilities. So if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Please comment to give your suggestions. Your suggestions would be very valuable for me and please share the video among your friends. Thank you.